Welcome to part one of the North Pole video series designed to help you experience truly extraordinary and unforgettable moments. This is a destination that is literally on top of the world and for many travelers, the pinnacle of their worldwide explorations. We are one of the only travel companies who are able to offer this journey as there's a very narrow window of time in which it's possible. Because of this, only a few hundred people have the opportunity each year to visit the epicenter of the Arctic, the North Pole. Here's a quick agenda of what we're going to go over. What types of travelers would enjoy the North Pole the most? Where is the North Pole? How do I get there? Traveling to the North Pole is a very unique expedition that very few can even dream of experiencing. It's also a significant investment. To help you identify if this is the right expedition for you, consider if the following characteristics we've observed in past North Pole passengers sound familiar. They are often among the most well-traveled in the world and from around the world. Typically, our North Pole passenger makeup includes significant representation from China, the US, the UK, Germany, Switzerland, Canada, and Australia. For almost half, English is not their first language. Approximately 40% of our past North Pole passengers are non-English speaking. So we've developed an industry-leading multilingual onboard experience for Mandarin speakers. North Pole passengers can also be characterized by their desire for an exclusive, authentic voyage that few will ever experience. They want to go off the beaten path and do something totally amazing that they'll be able to tell their friends about over dinner for years to come. True bragging rights. Does this sound like you? The geographic North Pole itself is at the very center of the Northern Hemisphere, diametrically opposed to the South Pole. In other terms, it's at the very top of the world. It defines latitude 90 degrees north, and all lines of longitude converge there. While Antarctica is a giant landmass surrounded by water, the Arctic is ocean surrounded by land, made up of a lot of islands and continents in the massive Arctic Ocean. The North Pole is located in the middle of this ocean, amid waters that are almost permanently covered in shifting sea ice. As you can imagine, this makes it one of the least accessible bucket list destinations on the planet. While no one owns the North Pole, in a way, it belongs to everyone, for exploration and research purposes. Traveling to the North Pole is an adventure today as much as it ever was, and you also have two options to get there, by land or by sea. The first option is to spend several days on board sailing the Arctic Ocean and breaking ice to get there. This is the expedition we're going to focus on today. But there is a second option, by air. Each year, we take a select few travelers to spend a night at a fly-in base camp at 89 degrees north, called Barneo Ice Camp. It's a functioning science and logistics station run by the Russian Geographical Society. This is a great option if you have less time. It's a three-day trip, but are still highly motivated to reach the North Pole. If you're interested in Barneo Ice Camp, please reach out to a Polar Travel Advisor for more information. But back to the focus of today, reaching the North Pole by sea. As I mentioned earlier, traveling aboard 50 Years of Victory is a memorable experience in itself. You need three things in an icebreaker, an ice-strengthened hull, a powerful engine, and a shape which allows it to push the ice out of the way. 50 Years of Victory is an Arctica-class icebreaker. That's the highest designation you can get. On top of that, it was the first with a spoon-shaped bow and can break through ice 2.5 meters or over nine feet thick and two nuclear reactor thrusters provide up to 74,000 horsepower. Originally built as a working icebreaker, this is the only ship powerful enough to make the trek. During the fall, winter, and spring, 50 Years of Victory is still used to clear shipping lanes in the Northeast Passage. Another cool feature of the ship is that it's equipped with a helicopter, both for sightseeing and so our expedition leaders can scout the conditions ahead and find the best and most interesting routes and activities for passengers. It's also equipped with Zodiacs for transporting passengers to shore landings and for exploratory cruising in the Arctic Ocean. So all in all, this is a ship built for the most extreme adventures en route to one of the most inaccessible places in the world. Next, we're going to go over the onboard amenities available. While the ship is a working vessel, it was later modified to accommodate passengers by adding a lecture hall and lounge. Other amenities on the Victory include a polar library, gym, multi-purpose sports courts, two saunas, and a small saltwater plunge pool, and polar boutique. Each day, your guests will enjoy a variety of European chef-prepared dishes in the dining room, which has all open seating and a great environment for mingling and meeting fellow guests. 
The cabins each have their own exterior views, private facilities, a TV and DVD player, and plenty of storage for your passengers' Arctic clothing and gear. They are rustic but comfortable. All cabins, even suites, have a twin bed and a sofa bed. There are no double, queen, or king-size beds. Traveling on an icebreaker is quite different than traveling on a traditional cruise line. It really is an authentic adventure to sail the Arctic Ocean and reach 90 degrees north on board the world's most powerful icebreaker. This concludes part one of the video series. In the next video, we'll answer the questions, what can I see and do, and when should I go? Watch part two to keep learning.